subscribe, you can subscribe. Just press that button that's over there. You can also like, you can subscribe and like. You can do all those things at the same time. Nothing in it for you whatsoever. Not nothing for you. All for me. Like, subscribe. Do it now. If you can do it, I'd really appreciate it. Now let's see the video. Wow. Cool. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. made a, a video on Liz recently but I'm too lazy to go look and check so anyway it was in the news she's on that committee I thought I'd do another one there's a little bit of an update here's some more information about her let me start by saying thank you so much to everybody who watches my videos thank you thank you thank you but here is some information on Liz Cheney and you know once I, I kind of got this off a of wiki I wikied her yes I did but uh, I edited it down, tried to get it down to just a little bit, of, and then I thought, this stuff looks familiar, so I'm sure, I'm sure I did a video on her uh, not too long ago, but stuff has happened. So we'll do another card draw, and here's the information on Liz. You'll probably find it interesting. I found it interesting. And we'll start out with when she was born, which is 1966. She's Elizabeth Lynn Cheney, and she was born in Madison, Wisconsin on July 28th, so that makes her what? Of course, a Leo. She's the elder of two daughters of former Vice President Dick Cheney. Remember, he was with uh, Bush, the second Bush. Now, in 1984, she graduated from McLean High School, and she was a cheerleader. And uh, she received her Bachelor of Arts degree from Colorado College. Her senior thesis was on, guess what, the evolution of presidential war powers. Wow. 1989, she's 23 years old now, and before attending law school, she worked for the State Department for five years and the United States Agency for International Development. 1993 now, she marries a lobbyist and they have five kids and she later worked at a consulting firm. 1996 at 30, Liz receives a Juris Doctor from the University of Chicago Law School and took courses in Middle Eastern History at the Oriental Institute. I've been there, it's a cool place. She practiced law in Chicago and the Oriental Institute. She practiced law, including international law, and, is a, and was a consultant. Uh, she was also a special assistant to the Deputy Secretary of State for assistance to the former Soviet Union and a USAID, USA officer in the United States embassies in Budapest and in Warsaw. So, so now, 2002, she's 36, and Liz was appointed Deputy Assistant uh, Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs. 2003, she left the State Department post to work in her father's 2004 re-election campaign with Bush. In 2005, she was appointed special, no, not special, but principal, which is kind of special, principal deputy assistant secretary of state. So principal deputy assistant secretary of state for Near Eastern Affairs and coordinator for broader Middle East and North Africa initiatives. Uh, 2009, Cheney helped found the Keep America Safe nonprofit concerned with uh, national security issues. And now in 2012, she was hired as a contributor for, of course, Fox News. In 2013, Cheney announced a run for the Senate in 2014 for uh, Wyoming, and uh, Liz announced uh, opposition to same-sex marriage. Her gay sister wrote, either you think all families should be treated equally or you don't. Her position is to treat my family as second-class citizens. Now, Mary's wife, her sister's wife, Heather, wrote, Liz has been a guest in our home. She spent time and shared holidays with her children. When Mary and I got married, she didn't hesitate to tell us how happy she was for us. So. To have her now say she doesn't support our right to marry is offensive, to say the least. Cheney ended her Senate campaign uh, citing family health issues. 2016, Cheney announced a candidacy for Wyoming's House seat and was elected with over 60% of the vote. Just have to wait for good things to come. In 2017, she was sworn into office. Donald Trump became president that same month. 2018, she was re-elected to the House. Now, in 2019, Liz said that Peter Stroke with another FBI agent who sent personal text messages disparaging various politicians and Trump might be planning a coup and may be uh, guilty of treason. Uh, 2020, Jim uh, 2020, Jim Jordan, we all remember him, and An Andy Biggs uh, criticized her for defending uh, Dr. Fauci. And uh, 
Cheney asked the Justice, Justice Department to investigate Chinese and Russian attempts to influence, uh, wow, environmental and energy policy in the United States. Cheney voted in line with Trump's position almost 93% of the time, more so than even his chief of staff, uh, Mark Meadows. She said, here we go. The president of the United States summoned this mob, assembled the mob, lit the flame of this attack. Everything that followed was his doing. None of this would have happened without the president. The president could have immediately and forcefully intervened to stop the violence. He did not. There has never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States of his office and his oath to the Constitution. Cheney announced that she would vote to impeach Trump for his role in inciting the storming. Then, at a rally just before the storming, Trump told the mob of insurrectionists to get rid of Cheney, and they attacked the Capitol while chanting, Hang Mike Pence, and trying to find lawmakers. Now, 2021, Freedom Caucus members removed her from the party uh, leadership. She intends to fight to restore the party and may be interested in a future presidential run. The House Republican Conference, in a closed-door secret uh, ballot, voted to remove her. Yet, uh, she said, I will do everything I can to ensure that Trump never again gets anywhere near the overall office. He drags us backward in his efforts to unravel our democracy, and she intends to be the leader in a fight to restore the Republican Party. She didn't rule out a 2024 presidential bid. The Brookings Institute argued that she has a long-term strategy to become the leader of the Republican Party. She's a real conservative. Democrats who like her opinion to Trump, or I'm sorry, Democrats who like her opinion of Trump and her opposition to him will never like her politics. Speaker Pelosi appointed her to the House Select Committee on the January 6th attack with, you know, uh, Adam Kinzinger. So that's... That's what I know about uh, Liz Cheney, and so let's do a little draw right now to see what the cards tell us currently about Liz in this committee and uh, whether all of this is going to work out. Is she going to be president? What's going to happen? Is she going to leave the Republican Party? There's so many questions. I probably don't have time for them all. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group, uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot Second Edition, and uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands, but uh, they're a lot of money, and um, but they're beautiful cards, and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box, no big deal there at all. Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read, and uh, in the... Uh, regular uh, in the lower arcana cards they've got an extra card in each uh, suit so you know you've got cups wands swords and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head uh, pinnacles uh, but so you, they go all the way to the ten of, of swords for instance the next one then should be a page but here we have a princess of swords and then after the princess of swords you still get the page the knight the queen and the king so you have one extra card for each of those four suits so instead of 78 uh, 79 uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if, if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there, and uh, this gives you an idea of how to divine the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together, and there's no air between the cards, and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, fool, number one, with a major arcana, and it tells me that the fool 
uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card. Uh, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, The Magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight. The Astronomer by Candlelight, and it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art, and thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful and it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards and i like that and i think you like them too so liz cheney what what's new with you liz so we've got the latest situation is now she's on the uh, january 6th committee and so the republicans are scared to death i would imagine of what's going to be come come out there I think she's setting herself up perfectly to be the head of the Republican Party in some way, shape, or form. And uh, I dare say that was always her ambition, probably, to run for president. And so it looks like if things go her way, she and her committee mate, Adam, may be uh, running against each other in 2024. So why don't we start off with that? Is, is Liz going to run in 2024. Okay, is Liz Cheney going to run for president in 2024? And uh, just for that question, I'm just going to go with three cards, and then we'll go on to uh, some other questions. Is Liz Cheney going to run in 2024? Just going to take three cards for that question. One, Two. Feels like three. It is three, so it will be four. For some reason, that other card was trying to sneak in there. <clears throat> is Liz Cheney going to run in 2024? First card, then, is going to be the Six of Cups. Well, that certainly is what she's trying to do. She's trying to remind us, and it's so funny because this new uh, version of uh, the Republican Party under MAGA, uh, Make America Great Again, under the red the red caps, we'll call them. These red caps have this uh, false um, uh, narrative about, well, we're going to make things uh, great like they used to be. But in fact, what Liz uh, Cheney found herself in the position of is someone who's trying to bring these crazies uh, to uh, under control and bring the Republican Party to back uh, back to what maybe it used to be was which would have been something respectable it's very interesting yeah and if you look at these two the old lady and uh, this uh, sweet uh, young girl she the old lady trying to fix the broken doll almost you could say or admiring it and is really showing uh, this uh, young girl look look how wonderful this can be if we just take care of it so I wonder if this could be Liz of this Republican Party and are these the Republican um, uh, constituent onlookers and you're gonna say oh yeah look how nice it can be if someone takes care of it if someone nurtures it if someone fixes it up so that's the first card this won't be this will just be four in a row see what kind of story they tell and then the second card for that is uh, the five of wands and the Five of Wands is exactly that. It's uh, You could almost say this is the signifier and this is what's the challenge to it. Uh, the Five of Wands is always uh, conflict and uh, things kind of being mixed up. And this is kind of sweet here, too. You've got these two little little uh, youngins, and uh, this fellow's got a deck of cards or you know, a spread of cards in his hands with a few cards here. And listen, they're playing a game. I can't quite make out what this fellow's hiding in the basket, but I'll be looking this card up as soon as this uh, reading's over with. I can assure you that. But yeah, so Five of Wands is always a conflict, uh, argy-bargy, uh, you know, uh, and uh, so that's what we've got there. The, the third card, and this little four-card spread there, is the Seven of Swords, the Seven of Swords. And I know that the Six of Swords is, is war, moving out of troubled water, but the Seven of Swords is really um, 
you know, th kind of theft and betrayal. Um, and so let's take our, our clue from the cards again. So we've got uh, uh, this woman here and this little devilish uh, imp uh, down here in the bottom and this uh, patient, uh, almost a motherly figure, trying to tame uh, this little impish uh, child. So it's, it's theft and betrayal and, and not being able to trust, um, you know, obstacles. So that's kind of what we got there. And uh, so we said, will she run for president? So I can show you how things used to be. Um, we have all this conflict right now. Uh, there's been theft and betrayal on a, a significant scale. And then the last card in that, in that pool there is going to be the King of Cups. And, uh, the, you know, Cups are always all about emotions and uh, compassion. And um, the King of Cups is the very strongest of the court cards. And so uh, here he is, you know, this beautiful, happy, celebratory figure with this fiddle and getting ready to start the party. He's going to be the life uh, of this party. So I wonder uh, if this doesn't uh, lean us towards the answer that, yeah, that maybe she might be very strongly considering getting the party started. Party, interesting that I would use that uh, term because we are talking about the Republican Party. So put those back in there and we'll just do a full Celtic cross now. On Liz Cheney. I guess what I want to know, I mean, it's, it's probably appropriate to ask uh, if the committee is going to find, um, you know, significant, damning, uh, substantial uh, information that sticks uh, in this in this thing. But what does limit Liz is there, I would say, to get to the truth. And I would guess that she's most concerned that more than anything else with Trump. I wonder, though, if she's as anxious to find dirt on her other Republican Party members. Um, how would I feel in that case? I would want to sh peel back uh, the curtain on Trump. And by this point, where she's had so many of her own party betray her, I think I'd be looking for that, too, if I were her. So I think she's going to have a sharp eye out uh, for uh, damage to her own party. And as a matter of fact, this is at the point where the information she gleans from this investigation and Adam Kinzinger, too, by, by the way, but this is about Liz. The information she brings from this investigation is going to be a roadmap to who she can trust. And, um, and then those, there's going to be people, uh, when this is finished, who will be uh, ready to sign on to her, um, on to her, or jump onto her wagon, I think. So, will she be able to use information from this, um, this investigation? to push her uh, towards the presidency. And I think this is number one. We'll take number two from over here. I'm gonna take number three on this side. We'll go back here for four, right up there for five. And uh, let's get six from right here. Okay, so we're ready. That's the first part of a Celtic cross for, is she gonna get information out of this investigation that's going to um, you know, help her in her bid for the presidency in 2024. Do I have one? One, two, three, four, five, six. The signifier card for that is the Ten of Coins. You know what the Ten of Coins is? It's happy family. And look at this family here. Here's here's Liz Cheney with the whole Republican Party uh, at her. You know, looking to her for uh, for leadership. That's the happy family card. Everything good. Ten of Coins. That's a uh, uh, that's a signifier. The challenge to that is the King of Swords. King of Swords, you know, swords for me, again, you'll hear me say it over and over again, are truth and justice, but they can be uh, healing. Uh, they certainly can be rules and law. And uh, this King of Swords is very comfortably confident, I would say. So who would be the King of Swords in this scenario? I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll set this challenge right next to this uh, Ten of Coin and see what comes up. Uh, be thinking about what it means for you. In the base of this reading, then, is the Hierophant. Uh, that's very significant uh, to come up in this reading because I'm asking about government and if she will consider uh, the information she gets to help her um, move towards government in a bigger way. Uh, so the Hierophant is at the base of this reading, and it is. The government is absolutely at the base of all of this. I mean, without uh, the government, there wouldn't be an inquiry. Uh, there would just be a banana republic, which Trump would like. In the past of this reading, is the Three of Cups, which were celebrations. So she has had a very celebrated past. I mean, she, uh, as soon as she got out of, out of college, she really started working in a big way 
uh, towards government. And she even knew, it looks like from what she studied, that that's the way she would lean. Uh, in the sky of this reading is uh, temperance. And so, of course, um, and uh, this is a very um, cautious young woman here. And so temperance is all about uh, balancing uh, this information out. And so, yeah, what she's going to get from being on this committee is going to give her so much, so much uh, value that she'll need to uh, be careful with how she uses it. Okay. Then, the likely outcome of this part of the reading are lovers. So this is wonderful. Lo the lovers of the major arcana. Uh, this tells you there's significant uh, partnerships that will occur from this. And uh, this could even be uh, Kinsinger and uh, Cheney. Wouldn't that be an interesting ticket? Uh, to be honest, if she'd have it read uh, Cheney and Kensinger, so for president and vice president. So the likely outcome of this is um, the question being, will she use information uh, from that uh, committee to move a career forward towards presidential uh, aspirations? And I think, yeah, it will. So here we got the Ten of Coins, happy family. You know, she's there at the head of the table. Just really, everybody is really adoring her and in the palm of her hand. Uh, this challenged by the King of Swords. King of Swords has to be the rules and um, the judgment that has to go with this. That's the challenge. Getting this, uh, it's really threading a needle uh, towards, a pres towards a presidency. Uh, the uh, base of the whole thing, of course, is the Hierophant, which is government, clearly done. Uh, the past of this reading was the Three of Cups, all those small celebrations that have helped her uh, move her career forward, and the sky, she has to uh, wish for temperance, and uh, the lovers, and the right kind of partnerships from this. So let's go ahead and get the last four cards the self of this question, uh, will the information she uh, gets from this committee uh, move her towards presidency? And I say, oh, this is the tower. So the self of this question is the tower moment. So I'm going to tell you that just uh, blatantly, this tells me she's not going to get the presidency. That's what I think. It's a lot of useful information. She's going to probably uh, use it to its full advantage, but I don't think she's going to become president in 2024 anyway. The... Um, environment that that tower moment then is in I guess so this is the two of cups and it's interesting that we get the uh, two of cups right here under the lovers because it's a very similar card this is the major arcana this is the uh, uh, of course the cup suite and the uh, two of cups is a um, celebrations partnership but more so partnership I mean we can see uh, this is a bride and this is her uh, maiden attending her a very lovingly way you know it could be a sister uh, so yeah, so this is uh, this tower is in the environment of um, I think she's going to become the darling of the Republican Party, and uh, the fact she doesn't win the nomination is going to be a loss uh, for them in a, in, a, in a meaningful way. And then the um, two cards want to come up here, but I only want one. So the um, hopes and the fears of all of this. Then this is the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords, yeah, is knowing when to take a break, take a rest. And really contemplate, you know, all what's happened to you. And this uh, sad figure here just lends a little more credence to me for this terror moment that she's not going to make it all the way. But let's see, the sky of this reading uh, is what? It's the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups is the woman who is always in charge of her emotions. And this Queen's Cup is empty or she wouldn't be holding it like that. You know, it's tipped over and she just knows that, uh, you know, what's happened has happened for the best. She still has her cup, so she can still uh, put some more in there. She can fill it up even. And uh, she has a, uh, a banner of a winner here. So I think this um, Queen of Cups is who she comes out as uh, at the end of everything. So, yep, that seems pretty clear to me. So, I mean, that's what I got. Uh, we'll go really fast because I feel like I've taken a lot of time in this video already. Um, so, the question was, will she uh, use what she learns to uh, push herself toward the presidency? And we get happy family here, the Ten of Coins. I mean, that's the very most um, familial wealth is what it's speaking to. And so, yeah, it looks that way. But it's challenged by the King of Swords, which is probably, um, you know, some, some cuts along the way, some rules, and, um, and this is what we got there. So, the Hierophant, yeah, it's the base of everything. And then the Three of Cups are celebrations. In the sky, we have a Temperance, which she has to use to balance everything out. And uh, the likely outcome of the whole thing was the uh, major arcana, uh, the lovers. And so it looks like she may even find a running mate. Uh, but then the self of the of the situation was the tower card, and uh, that was in the environment of two of cups, which again uh, kind of uh, echoes the lovers. So she may come out, out of this, you know, smelling pretty sweet somehow. Uh, the hopes and the fears 
is just uh, the Four of Swords, which is really having to sit down and think through what you've done before you get up and do something again. And the likely outcome of everything, then, is the Queen of Cups, which is, of course, uh, being, uh, her cup, this Queen's Cup is empty, but uh, she still looks like she's getting a lot of attention. She can uh, uh, extend that cup out and ask for someone to fill it up again, and I'm sure she'll get something. So, that's what it looks like to me. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. Thank <laughs> you.